Sunday's deadly terror attack on what was once Israel's most quiet border has put a spotlight on the growing instability along Israel's border with Jordan. I'm Hanan Lishinsky and thank you for joining us for another All Israel News update, which today will focus on the instability and Israel's growing problem along its border with the Kingdom of Jordan. On Sunday, a former Jordanian soldier who worked as a truck driver approached the King Allenby uh, border crossing between Israel and Jordan from the Jordanian side. After already going through uh, a checkpoint on the Jordanian side, when he reached the Israeli side, he grabbed a gun which he had hidden inside of his truck and started shooting the Israeli security personnel. He managed to kill three Israeli security guards before being shot and killed himself. This rare incident on what was once Israel's most quiet border, where uh, IDF units who aren't really prepared for heavy-duty combat were, were being sent to guard the border there, uh, this incident highlights Israel's growing concern with uh, the instability coming from Jordan and possibly impacting Israel's security on the other side. Contrary to what one might think, Israel and Jordan have actually been at peace for 30 years and counting. Uh, despite the considerable hostility of uh, Jordan's population, which has led many to dub this a cold peace, uh, kind of like a cold war, just a cold peace in this case, actually Jordan's government led by its king and uh, the whole uh, family of the king and its power base are uh, cooperating with Israel in regards to security. On the one hand, this peace has held for over 30 years and has seen security cooperation, economic cooperation, and uh, partnerships in many other areas. But on the other hand, the lack of ability by the Jordanian government to uh, translate this cold peace uh, into something, into, into a peace between the populations, something that we saw with uh, the United Arab Emirates, for example, uh, this for Israel signifies a continuous threat to this peace and uh, the events of recent days have underlined this as well. Jordan's King Abdallah is caught in a very delicate balancing act. On the one hand, he is a major ally of Western countries. He's a strategic ally to the United States and US troops are based uh, in Jordan, uh, especially in the northern region which borders on Iraq, where the US has many forces and where uh, Jordanian forces have cooperated with the US in combating ISIS, for example. On the other side, uh, on more on the Muslim and uh, Islamic uh, side, Jordan's king is the uh, steward of the holy sites in Jerusalem. And this is something that he has leveraged to gain more diplomatic influence over Muslim and Islamic countries as well. So while Jordan's king Abdallah in public uh, is supportive of the West, is an ally of the United States and vocally upholds the peace treaty with Israel, uh, domestically, he has to deal with a population which is very hostile to all of those. To understand this complex situation, it's important to note that the royal uh, household, the Jordanian king and his family, don't actually hail from the area of Jordan. They fled from Saudi Arabia uh, for complex historical reasons and uh, were put in Jordan and were given the kingdom of uh, Transjordan, as it was known at the time, uh, by the British. So that means that they are now ruling a population which is mainly uh, made up on the one hand of Palestinians who are the majority and who fled there uh, from what is today Judea and Samaria. Another part of the population of Jordan is made up of uh, people who identify themselves as Palestinians and who always lived on the eastern bank, uh, on the eastern side of the Jordan River. But the main uh, backbone of the political power of the royal household in Jordan is made up of Bedouin tribes who lived in the area. And those are uh, the king's main supporters. They make up many of the senior officers in the security forces and they are his loyal troops, uh, giving him the ability to rule this population, uh, which doesn't agree with many of uh, the policies. Most importantly, the policy regarding Israel and the continuation of the peace with Israel. This means that the strategic security concerns of uh, the Kingdom of Jordan, its king and uh, its government, and Israel are aligned. They are aligned because both uh, countries, both governments, uh, let's say, have an interest in uh, keeping security uh, stable 
in counteracting, uh, especially the Islamist forces across the region, uh, across the region, for example, ISIS, but also uh, Hamas or uh, Hezbollah, who, uh, for example, encroach on Jordan from the north. And maybe the most important concern for both Jordan and Israel is the growing Iranian influence, uh, which is trying to establish uh, points of influence inside Jordan. Two of the most dangerous factors threatening both Israel and Jordan are ISIS and Iran. Uh, on the one hand, ISIS tries to establish uh, its groups and its uh, followers in the same way as it did in other uh, countries across the region. As mentioned before, Jordan was part of the international coalition targeting ISIS in Iraq and Syria, and since that time has been trying to uh, increase its border security to both uh, keep ISIS uh, supporters out of the country itself and also clamp down on weapons smuggling which could uh, provide uh, weapons and uh, equipment to people trying to establish ISIS cells within Jordan itself. Now ISIS, it's important to understand um, uh, the threat goes further than just security. The ISIS propaganda targets the legitimacy of the uh, Jordanian royal house itself. According to Islamist ideology, uh, non-Islamic regimes like, for example, the Jordanian king aren't legitimate rulers at all. And in this way, they are uh, religiously sanctioned uh, legitimate targets for terror attacks or even revolts. So it is clear that uh, the Jordanian kingdom is working uh, as much as it can to clamp down on ISIS activities within Jordan, which in this case also benefits Israel because ISIS, of course, also hates Israel and wants to kill uh, as many Jews and as many Israelis as it can. The other big threat that we mentioned earlier is Iran. Again, somewhat like ISIS, Iran, uh, only more successfully, Iran has set up its uh, cells and its proxy militias across the Middle East. For example, Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, which is uh, has been uh, described as the crown jewel, of course, of its efforts, um, but also uh, across uh, Syria, for example, in uh, Yemen, of course, and in other countries, Iran has set up its proxy militias, which are doing its bidding. Now, uh, Jordan sits, it's a pretty big country, sits in the middle uh, of the region and doesn't really have an Iranian factor yet. However, this hasn't been for a lack of trying. And in fact, the IDF uh, only in recent months talked about the growing smuggling of weapons and especially explosives, which uh, comes uh, from Syria, from Iraq, from places where Iran does have influence and uh, through uh, ways and routes that we don't really uh, have information on at the moment, crosses through Jordan and uh, reaches Judea and Samaria and especially uh, the areas in Samaria where the IDF has uh, conducted very intense operation in recent months to root out uh, terror cells which have uh, explosive charges and which are producing, uh, hoping to produce suicide bombs and uh, to carry out these kinds of attacks in Israel. So this is a factor that is directly threatening Israel, but it's also of course against uh, the interest of the Jordanian government to have Iranian smuggling operations going on in its country. In addition, as we already mentioned, the Western, uh, the close connection which Jordan has with Western countries, uh, of course, places it on uh, the different axis, on the opposite axis from Iran and its axis together with uh, Russia and all of the other proxy militias, militias it has in the region. So the uh, stability of the Jordanian uh, government is also a target of Iranian influence and Iranian terrorism. So in conclusion, this uh, necessary partnership, this partnership of interests between uh, Israel and the Jordanian government has been necessary for both sides, but its future uh, looks to be very much in doubt. Despite the hostility of the Jordanian society, which we could see, for example, in the reactions to the terror attack on Sunday, which uh, caused celebrations in Jordanian streets, uh, the government, the both governments, needs, need the strategic cooperation and in the near future it looks like it will continue. However, the IDF is expected to devote uh, much more resources than it has uh, until now to uh, what is, after all, Israel's longest border, longest land border, and this will cost Israel millions of shekels and uh, much resources at a time when its resources are already stretched thin. Especially in this critical situation, this very tense security situation that Israel is in at the moment, 
the continued cooperation with Jordan uh, looks to be one of the most important factors in Israel's security for the near future. Visit allisrael.com or follow our social media channels to keep up to date on Israel's security challenges on all fronts.